Hey, this is David Cavanaugh. Welcome back. I actually welcome myself back because I haven't made a video in forever. This lockdown's been been something I've been able to work, thank goodness. I was working from home before this, so anyway, I'm kind of one of the lucky ones. But I decided I needed to get into this bike. I've been riding around a little bit and I've had the I ordered these Seen the steel braided lions from hell. Um, they should be uh, giving me a lot better brake feel, but the original lines are now 30 years old, so that's a safety hazard. I took off the fairings today, and I, I decided while I'm here, I should also do the X-up service. So I took the cover off the valve. Fortunately, the bolts weren't seized. I'm going to soak the remaining bolts up here with a little bit of... Um, PB blaster just to make sure and uh, yeah there's a very excellent service um, guide that I'll link to the video um, in in the description so yeah um, what else have I been doing right tires I, I realized my inspection was slightly overdue and the date code on here um, that's a three digit numeric code there and what I found out that means is this is a pre-2000 tire. The rear also has a, a same situation. So I've got tires from 1998 and 99 on this bike. Far too old. So new tires, new brake lines, and uh, I'll be good to go. I'll film some more here once I get further along. I wanted to point out something here before I took the brakes apart. Just notice how there's two brake lines attached to the master cylinder directly. That's what's called race lines. The other alternative is one line that goes down to a junction which connects to two separate lines for each of the calipers. So here the service manual shows the race lines. And I had a heck of a time finding race lines online. And I talked to the guys from hell, they had an ad on eBay, and I emailed them, and they said they could make those, once they looked it up in the right place. I also had to make the rear line and the clutch line, so yeah, I'll be doing all those things. So now I was trying to get the brake lines freed up, and the brackets that hold them here require this bolt be, be loosened up. But to get access to that and pull it out fully, you need to loosen up the, the nut that holds the reflector in so the reflector can be rotated out of the way and then the, that bolt can be retracted fully. And then it comes off the bracket and off the brake line. What I'm trying to do now is figure out how um, to get the, this bracket off. This holds both the lines below the master cylinder and that's attached to the forks. So I have a, you can see an Allen key in one of the bolts, there, there's two bolts there that hold the bracket on for the horn, and then there is another Allen, an Allen head bolt that holds the bracket that clamps the brake lines, but you can't get that freed up because there's not clearance on the other, on the other side due to bolts that are in the triple tree, and so this has to come off, and that's what I'm working on now. All right, so once I got those out of there, um, see if I can hold everything with two hands. I need, I need a bigger, better rig than this. So you can see here that the bracket back here that holds the brake lines is now free. And I, and I freed that up. And now these brake lines are only being held up there on the master cylinder and down here on the calipers. So, next thing up is they come off. So I decided before I broke, cracked open the brake lines that I would open the bleeder and get all this nasty fluid out. And it looks like I'm not getting any more coming from the master cylinder. So you can see how, how dark that is. That's horrible. I just had a container from a last time, last motorcycle bleed I did, 
and uh, I go recycle this all at once someplace. Anyhow, I thought it was easier if there's less fluid in the lines. I'll have less fluid leaking out of the lines when I take them off. So I'm all for less mess. Onward. Lines off now. And then I have the, the hell lines laid out here. There's the rear brake line. Here's the two front. Here's the, the clutch line and all the new hardware that comes with. Very, very nice kit. So I do notice that the these two lines, the, the front lines, they look identical in length, but really the outer one is slightly longer, um, realizing that one side needs to be a little longer than the other. Um, however, I'm thinking that these things are more than, I don't know, I'll have to test to fit them to see how they are, but I'm concerned that this one here is longer than this is here. And you can see the difference here is about half the joint of my forefinger, and this is about two joints of my forefinger. Of course, the, cur the curves are a little different and all that stuff, so anyway, I'm going to have to transfer over um, some, th some of these things, uh, these little, uh, what are, I don't know what you call them, rubber, rubber guys uh, that fit into the, the clamps that hold the brake lines. So I get those transferred over. They look like they're split, and they should just move over pretty easily. I get these other lines put in place, and before tightening anything up, see how it looks. So now I'm checking fit. I have the new bolts and crush washers installed. And you can see that they go through the I guess you call it a grommet, and they aren't particularly tight. Let's see if I can do this with one hand. Yeah, you know, there is the grommet's not tight on the new lines. The new lines are stainless steel braided with a very thin coating on them, a rubber coating, so they won't abrade against anything. So I suppose this just guides that. I might like a a little thicker grommet on that, but I think for now I'm going to see how this goes. And I have the lines back there routed. Let's see if I can put the camera in here. I have them routed back um, through through that bracket and up to the master cylinder up there. And if I look down below, it seems like there's a bit of extra. <laughs> That's the best way to put it, I guess. I have one line here, and it goes up and around like that. Um, I don't know that it's a bad thing. I'm just not sure where all the extra should go. I don't want it interfering because you see that that aluminum bracket back there is attached to the frame and as I go through the steering um, things move around. Um, let's see. That looks like it's basically okay. At, at full lock, the, the lines are just touching on the on that aluminum bracket in the middle. But I, I don't go full lock very often, and certainly not at speed. <laughs> so, anyhow. Anyway, I'd love to hear some opinions. And the next step is to get things snugged up and do some bleeding. Well, as you can see, I have the XF valve disassembled and I've gone after it a little bit with a wire brush just to clean off any of the soot. I have some copper anti-seize lubricant and printed up the instructions that I that I've linked from the description. So things came apart pretty well. The bike only has 7,700 miles on it and it's probably a little premature but I thought well this is something that is known to get seized up so I better stay ahead of this on the maintenance front. And everything came apart quite well. Nothing was seized or even remotely. I did have to tap the, the end plate to get it freed up a little bit, but that was about it. Alright, well, let's get it back together. Well, there's that job done. And the sense of satisfaction it comes with actually getting something done. 
but now, now that I'm down here and looking around, you can see what I'm seeing here, and there is some oil that's coming down from someplace. You know, there might be some gasket issues. Uh, I wasn't seeing anything above the water pump, so I'm not sure where that's coming from. Oops, I'm probably washing that out with my light. Anyway, so you can see maybe above, up in there, um, there's some oil coming down. And it may be a little crud underneath the water pump there. And over here, um, I'm seeing some crud as well. But that's where the chain is above there. Maybe that's just, you know, chain lube that's creeping down through there. I've never taken that cover off. I've never had a need to. But, I, you know, I cleaned the chain a couple times and, and looped it up. So, you know, I, I may have a look in there. And there's usually a lot of crud in there around the around the sprocket. But yeah, alright. At least the exit valve is in good shape, moves very freely. Before there used to be a little bit of a, a noise, like almost, not quite a grinding noise, but you know, like metal on metal. And now with all that, with that copper lube in there, um, it sounds really good. Like it's silent when I move it. So that's that. I'll probably get on to some other brake work next. Right, well, now I have the rear brake line off, and comparing that to the new one, it looks pretty good. There is a 90 degree back here, a little tighter than the stock line. This end is straight on the new line, and it has a little curve on the on the old line. I guess I'll see how that looks when I get it mounted up. I found I needed a long, I could have used a longer extension, honestly, um, to free up the the, the bolt for the master cylinder from the opposite side of the bike although there's a fair amount of room to get your hand in here but anyway it's a long extension it's pretty good from the other side and then here that was a little tight I just had a little room to work with behind the, the muffler it might have been nice to have the bike on the ground push the wheel up a little bit in any case I think it should be fine just using a open end wrench all right, let me get it on, and I'll uh, see you later. Here's the the rear line fitted. I was worried that the this wouldn't contact the little um, bump that sticks out to keep that from rotating as you tighten, but it does, so that's great. So I, once I get that snugged up, um, it should be in the right position. I'm a little concerned about this. Um, this you know, the grommets are loose because these lines aren't nearly as big. They don't have an the thick rubber coating. So I'm probably going to just add zip ties crossed over this um, to hold that in place, make sure it doesn't pop out. Um, yeah. Next thing, I guess, I need to get the cover off, get, get access to the reservoir, and, and get that blood. A couple days later. So what I found out was the fitting on the end of this is designed to be rotated with the hell lines. So if you if you firmly grip the swage on here, not enough to crush it, but enough to hold it firmly. I backed off that little uh, yellow tag first. You can put a, a 10 millimeter bolt in here and and rotate that around. And uh, yeah, so that's what I did, and that's the stock setup now. I've I've torqued those, and those are now pointing slightly back from vertical, which is what's recommended here um, in that diagram. Notice that. In addition to that, I've removed the rear tire, the rear wheel, sorry. All the bearings seem good. Um, basically, I'm going to uh, get new tires, like I mentioned earlier. And uh, yeah, so that's the first step. But I had, I had no real way that made me happy for removing the front wheel supporting the bike with that. So I've ordered a, a, another stand that interlocks with um, with the, the headstock. Um, there's a, there's a, a hole underneath there. It's really hard to see. When, but yeah, there's a hole at the bottom of the headstock and this stand interlocks with that. 
and lifts the bike. So you're free to do anything you want with the, the tire, the wheel, the brakes, even the, the fork tubes. You can take those off with this stand, so that's pretty nice. Hopefully it won't take more than a few days to get that here. Yeah, so that's it for today. I've got, I've got that tightened up now. You know, I, I may spend some time torque, you know, trying to get the, the, the brakes bled. I, I do have a little bleeding set up with the Mighty Vac, and I was trying to bleed the rear brake, but now that I have the, the disc out of there, I, I can't really do that anymore. But that was being a real pain. I, I flushed all the old fluid. I've got clean fluid in the reservoir now. I'm just trying to get that flushed through and uh, get some pressure on the pedal, but that'll have to wait. So yeah, the bike will be down for a little bit, but should be better than ever when I'm done. The next big task will be after this will be carburetors. I've done those last summer, but I didn't break the rack and I didn't fix the seals in the starter circuits. So, yeah, I th it seems like at idle, I've got some hanging idle, which could be a couple different things. As, and I have no, and I finally got fittings to attach vacuum gauges to the intake runners. So I might get one of those carb tune setups. I had made my own sort of a manometer here um, that I used on my old bike with colored water just on, on a long piece of uh, oak flooring. But, you know, I got to do one at a time then and cap off the other ones. And anyway, not a super a lot of fun. But, and the carb tune would be so much better. Oh, yeah, and also this guy, the clutch hose. Is, is to be replaced as well. All right, well, I'll update you once I get a little more progress. It's officially a week later, and some progress has been made. All the brake lines are torqued down, and fluid's been pushed through. I have new tires. I just put the wheels on t today, tonight. So those are our Dunlop Road Sport 2's and uh, yeah I think those would be great for what I'm doing if I was tracking I would probably use the I don't know there's some sort of other Sport 3 3 Plus or something that's stickier but these would be great anyhow I still don't have the clutch line attached I've got brake fluid that's gone through the front and the rear and it's coming out the bleeders so I'm going to let those sit a little bit and see if I can um, <clears throat> let gravity help me. Although I'm not sure it's how, how it's going to help me on the rear. But pretty much getting ready to get things ready to go so I can get it on the road again. I haven't done the, the clutch line. That's why I still have the gas tank off. Because the clutch line goes up, up here into into the bot, the frame I believe and then out through the frame here and up to the, the master cylinder so yeah I gotta loosen up some ties and get that stake through that'll be fun what I'll probably do is get everything loosened up attach the new line to the old line at the banjo with like a zip tie and then start pulling and with, with any luck that'll, that'll work out alrighty if you Liking what you're seeing, like and subscribe. I'm going to try to up my production values here. And uh, I've done a lot of short segments for this video. And I'm going to try to start doing some time lapse of actually doing work on the bike next. So let me know what you think. Talk to you later. Alright, so this is where I didn't film as nearly as much as I thought I would and I just say cut to the end because basically the bikes back together and I'm I rode it tonight but there's some things I wanted to go over so namely some tricks about breeding bleeding the, the brake lines and also the new tires are they seem to work great um, they're really not past the braking period yet so I'm not really running them too hard. But I, I did get a, a a headstand for the front because that's the only way I could get the 
front tire off. And it came with a variety of, um, I don't know what do you call these posts that go into this, um, and, it, and that's supposed to go into the the hole in the center of the headstock. Well, so this is the longest, largest one this one comes with, and that's 18 millimeters. Turns out uh, that wasn't large enough, so I ended up kind of rigging this thing up. Um, you can see that that socket's a little bigger, and that has less play within the within the headstock. But it's not great. There's a lot of wobble here. Um, this is still not the perfect size. This is where I wish I had a lathe and I could just make exactly what I want. Um, because really what happens with extra play in here is that this, this bar does not stay as horizontal as it should. And it ended up resting on this a little bit and pushing the horn up, which was in the way. But um, that came back down. That's on a rubber mount. All right, so that, that's the front tire, and nothing really spectacular in the rear. It just came off and went back on normally. The interesting bit was trying to get the, the brakes bled, and I found a couple different videos online. I'll see if I can remember which ones they were so I can link to them. It wasn't that hard to get fluid pushed through and, and out and out through the calipers, so that every time I, I could... I'd give this a few squeezes and then open the bleeder valve and I'd get fluid coming out the tube. Um, that was just fine. The, the problem was getting that last bit of air out. In the front, what I had to do was I had to loosen up this bolt right here. and So I had a rag around here and I would loosen this up and then I actually had my wife um, squeeze the handle and when she did that, then I would loosen, I'd crack this open a little bit, and that's when I saw the, the bubbles come out. And it, it wasn't until I got all, I did that a few times and got all the bubbles out that I actually got a, a, a firm handle on this. And the brakes are, are, work great now. Now, in the rear, it was a different story. The tip that I found here that worked the best was to remove the caliper. I had this side cover off. And I could wire the the caliper up higher because, as you can see, the brake line is pretty much horizontal or actually going down. So it's really hard to force the bubbles in the direction you want, which is really to the bleeder. And there's actually two bleeders on this caliper. So I had this thing wired up here, and I could tap on the tip. Another tip was tapping on this with a like the screwdriver handle or something. And it just helps encourage bubbles to move along it. And basically, it was, it was kind of up... To, to here where the caliper was and and so what I could do is after it sat for about half an hour um, I, I was able to um, bleed out of both bleeder nipples on, on here and I would get some bubbles coming out and you know once I got this one so, so there was this, the second one which is farthest away from the, the hose attachment once I got that to come through clear then I focused on this one and I actually shifted the caliper around a little bit um, and so that I got different high spots and eventually I got a lot more air coming out of there and then this this got really firm so that's really good so those two things really helped me a lot and while I was at it I, I shined up the, the Yoshimura slip-on that came with the bike just because I got bored and was trying to figure out how to get the brakes going and Oh, yeah, so I didn't actually do the, the clutch line. That goes through um, through the frame, and I just decided it wasn't nearly as important. Um, I'm debating about getting a, a quick shifter just for the heck of it, not that I need it, really. Anyway, it's all back together, and I just wanted to do the one more video to wrap this up. So now I can go get this thing inspected on Saturday. There's a place near me that mounted the tires for me. Um, oh yeah, Westside Cycles. I wanted to give a shout out to those guys. Um, they do a great job. And yeah, so they do like $6 inspections on Saturday morning. So I'm going to run over there on Saturday and 
get that taken care of. All right, well, thanks for watching. Hopefully, I've had some interesting content here, and just leave me a comment. Let me know what you think. Thanks.